Got your uh, new welterweight champion is a 26 and 0 fighter who just dominated a uh, you know one of your long-standing champions. Uh, what did you think of that performance from Yaroslav Amosov? Yeah, I mean, I think that anybody that wants to compete in the welterweight division better have a complete game, and they better be able to wrestle. And that's something that uh, you know Amosov is very good at wrestling. Dan Lambert told me he's the best wrestler at AT&T when I was there last week, and he proved it tonight. You're a guy that's seen your fair share of martial arts uh, in your day. Where does his wrestling match up, do you think, in the scape of MMA? You know, I'll tell you, it's not just the wrestling because, you know, I think if it was only the wrestling, um, you know, I think Douglas could have maybe had a, an answer for, just for the wrestling part. But because he's worried about getting punched, he's worried about getting kicked, he's worried about getting taken down, it just, I think it threw him off. And, and Amosov has a complete game. And that's really what MMA is today. You can't just be good at one or two. You better have it all. And, his transitions were amazing tonight, and he was very smooth, and, you know, he did what he had to do. This card had a very welterweight vibe to it, even though the co-main event was a catchweight. You had Michael Venom Page up in the booth as well. So we're, how do you view the 170-pound the division right now? Amosov and Jason Jackson both sat up here, and they said mm -hmm. they want to fight each other next. Um, do you like that fight? Is MVP next? What are you kind of thinking right now? Yeah, I mean, I want to go back and, and talk to the fight team and, and figure that out. But um, listen, there's... Neiman Gracie out there too, Jackson, you got MVP, you got Lima, you got uh, Amosov. I mean, we got, we got a, a great division there. So, um, you know, we like to go back and, and, and reshuffle the deck and, and let's see how the rankings come out on uh, Monday. Aaron Pico picked up his fourth straight win in a row tonight. Uh, he said he's, he feels like he's ready to take that jump back up to, to fight some contenders. Do you agree with him? I mean, from what I saw tonight, to me, he was the star of the night as far as I'm concerned, man, because his improvement of his complete game, and we're talking left, right, body shot, takedown, his transitions were, were amazing. And so I saw a lot of combinations I haven't seen before with Aaron, and I think that his level of, of improvement has gone, gone up drastically. So, uh, you know, we'll have a conversation with his management and his coach and, and see what they're thinking. But, um, you know, he, he looked amazing tonight, and, and the guy he's fighting is no joke. So... You know, he, he was uh, he was impressive. Last one for me, kind of random. I saw you were uh, you were talking cage side quite a bit tonight with Combate Global's uh, Campbell McLaren. Was that just a friendly conversation? Was that a business conversation? Can you talk to me about that whole thing? No, it was actually just, you know, it's the first time I met Campbell. Great guy. He seemed like he uh, has a great business going over there. And, uh, you know, Michael Froman, who used to work for us back in the Strike Force days, is working over there. So it was a, it was a nice reunion, and he brought Campbell to come check it out. and. And we, you know, we just uh, hung out and said hello and, and just talk shop. It was, it was, he, it was a, a nice conversation. Scott, how did it feel being out there and, and hearing the fans again? It was, it was pretty surreal, honestly, at least for me. How was it for you? You know, it started for me yesterday when I walked into the building and there, was, there, were, there were no curtains up. <laughs> for one year, we've been in this environment, which is, you know, they've taken great care of us here at the Mohegan Sun. And... You know, we've had this closed environment, almost like a closed set, a little set design going on, and no fans. And so when I walked into the stadium yesterday and I saw the bleachers down, it almost, I had to look twice because it was such an unreal experience because we haven't done it for so long. But um, that's when it started hitting me. Okay, this is, this is a different setup and, and fans are going to come. And, and to me, you saw the fan interaction. It was, it was great. And they, they were very passionate. They they cheered for their, you know, their favorites, and they booed for the people they didn't want to win. Uh, and I always felt like sports needs fans, and fans need live sports. So t tonight was a, a great uh, return for us, and uh, we'll be back in two weeks with the same setup, same same amount of people, and then in July we'll pick it up, and hopefully by uh, you know, let's say September onward, it'll be kind of business back to usual, business as usual. Going back to Aaron Pico, like you said, he, he was the star of the night. He just continues to improve and get better and better. And the hype that surrounded him coming into MMA was just at a ridiculous level. Do you feel like he's exceeded your expectations at this point in your career? Or do we still have to wait a couple more to, to sort of gauge that? I, I tell you, what I saw tonight was spectacular and uh, tremendous growth from where I saw him fight last time. And, and really, I think, you know, he's more on the program of what we're looking for now. And the frequency of which we'll fight him will be more than we did before. And, you know, event, I think by the end of the year, he'll be right back up there to where, you know, he can start fighting the top guys again. Because 
I, I think that, you know, what I saw today was impressive and, and really it was about the transitions and the combinations and how fluid he was and from the punch, the kick to the takedown and, and come on to finish him with a, uh, the choke. I mean, I, I was like, wow, this, this guy has come full circle in my opinion, because, you know, he wasn't doing that a year ago, two years ago. Uh, and uh, he tried two or three attempts. He tried, um, you know, to finish him with a, a leg lock, knee bar, and it's, it, you know, he didn't work, but, but the transitions were there. So to me, that's, that's really what was the most impressive. And then last thing for me, I know you're not a matchmaker. You don't book all these fights. You have a team of, of, of individuals that do that, but Douglas Lima has been in this organization for a long time. He's one of the faces. He's lost two consecutive fights. That's something you don't say very often about a guy like that. What would you personally like to see next for him? Would you like to see him just kind of take a break and reflect and, and, and come back? Or do you want to see him sort of get right back in there? H have you talked to him at all since the fight? No, I haven't talked to him, but you know, that's really going to be up to him. I mean, the guy is a great fighter, right? He got out wrestled tonight and that's just what it is. It's part of the sport. You better have a wrestling game at that, at, at Amazon's level. Otherwise you're going to get taken down. You're going to be on your back all night and, uh, or you better be able to scramble and get back up. And you know what? It's, it just didn't work out for him tonight. He could have had off night. Um, but to me, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight MVP, right? I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Jackson. I wouldn't mind him fight seeing him fight, uh, even Gracie, there's, I mean, there's some fights out there for him, but really it's going to be based on what he wants to do, because if he wants to take some time off, then that's fine too. All right. We'll take a couple more questions here. Jim. Hey, Jim Varsalo, Miami Hero. Thank you so much. Hey, between Amasov, Jason Jackson, Marquez Jackson, South Florida just has so much talent down here. Just what is it like down here? I mean, coming down here and visiting here and all, and just, all the talent that's here and what they mean to Bellator and the card. Yeah, I'm not sure I, I understand the question exactly. Just South Florida in general. Oh, I see. All, yeah, this yeah. area. I mean, this area, South yeah. Florida, and just all yeah. the talent that's here. I'll tell you, just going to that gym, I went to AT&T last week to say hello to Dan Lambert and just have a look at his gym. I've heard so many great things about it. And, and here's a guy that, I mean, I'm talking about Dan, loves mixed martial arts, has loved MMA, loves the fighters, loves the trainers, loves the, he just loves that gym. And uh, if you know Dan's background, he doesn't need to do anything, but he loves to give back to the MMA community and he loves to have a home for these fighters. And, and I'll tell you, it was super impressive because the gym was 40,000 square feet, had everything you needed to become a, you know, to train as a professional. Uh, and he probably had about mm, probably about 100 people working out there. And then he told me, you know, we only allow professionals to train here. We don't have any classes for the general public. So that gym is really just built for super athletes to be MMA fighters, professional MMA fighters. And I know Sanford has a gym close by. I haven't had a chance to go look at it yet, but, I, you know, that's another group that has just an amazing uh, facility, amazing trainers. So you're right in Florida, man, they just have, it's a fight factory and it's really impressive. And between those two, I mean, there's, to me, there's those two gyms, there's AKA and San Jose. Think about the amount, the amount of talent that that gym has pumped out over the last, you know, 15 years. It's unbelievable. And then you got, uh, Winkle John and, um, Greg Jackson in Albuquerque, you got Henzo's Academy. And then there's a few pockets here, there, but those five gyms are, are probably producing, you know, I would say maybe 80% of the talent in MMA. So it's, uh, it's very impressive to, uh, to see, you know, so much, so many great fighters coming out of South Florida now. And lastly, for me, and again, thank you. Do you Scott see that this may be a good area then to have Bellator come down and now with everything opening up, starting to open up again to having something in South Florida, you have a lot of talent here. Yeah, you're talking about doing fights there in South Florida? Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we definitely talked about it, and uh, it's something we're considering. Um, and, you know, maybe in the future. I, I'm not sure if, uh, if my staff will show up to work, though, because, you know, being in South Florida, they, they might not show up. It's, uh, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a great place to go and, and celebrate and have a good time. But, uh, you know, as far as doing fights, listen, I'd love to go, and, uh, you know, we'll start working on it. John Carlo. 
Hi, Scott. Uh, great event tonight. I uh, just want to get your thoughts on uh, Yoel Romero. He recently did an interview where he talked about August as being a time where you'd like to get back in the cage. Uh, have you ever had uh, any recent discussions with them on possible opponents and uh, follow up to that? Would a potential fight be uh, an alternate for that 205 pound uh, Grand Prix? Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, when he's going to fight, we have to wait till he's cleared. Uh, and, and as soon as we get that clearance, we'll definitely schedule him right away. We're hoping before the you know end of the year, he'll at least fight one time. Uh, as far as being an alternate for the tournament, you know, that's a consideration. But uh, another consideration is to have him move down to 185 and start fighting there and and uh, get him busy. And maybe next year he could fight uh, if Gegar's still a champion or um, whoever he fights in the future, we can have a, a big super fight there. Gabriel. Hey, Scott, congratulations on having fans back and a successful evening. My question, I know there's always a lot of talk about there's so many promotions now getting so-called drafting that talent to the company is a little harder than it was before. When you talk about Yuroslav, what do you remember about maybe your conversations with Rich and when you pretty much signed this guy to be one of your up and coming talents in the company? Yeah, you know what? Um, I think it was actually Mike Kogan is the one that told me about him first. And I think Mike is the one that signed him. Uh, and, um, you know, when, when a kid is, you know, 20, I think at that time he was 22 and 0 or what, 21 and 0. Um, and he could wrestle, he could strike, he could, some, you know, have this great grappling game, had a lot of high hopes for this kid. And then I think the fight that really stood out to me was him and him and Ed Ruth. They had a great battle back and forth. Uh, and then he had a great fight here with Logan Storley, which uh, to me, that was an amazing fight, fast paced fight. He won, but that was a very close fight. I think that fight was a split decision, if I'm not mistaken. So you'll see Logan in here getting busy because I'm sure he's going to be motivated to fight uh, MSOF again at some point. But um, there's, you know, there, there, there is a tremendous uh, pool of athletes that would would love to fight him and i think logan's gonna be right up there but as far as you know we're out there looking for the best fighters in the world and and amosov is definitely one of them and he, you know it took a couple years to get here and uh, now he's a champ so it, it all worked out for him two more ed uh mr coker uh two questions in regards to what you just said about uh returning to business as usual one is um uh how soon do you think you and mr sakaki Barra can start doing some sort of business together again and mm -hmm. and two is uh with showtime's uh connection with the recent pay-per-view logan paul i know you've talked about it enough but is that something you uh might have a pin in for the future well the first part of the question was like i mean uh, japan is on lockdown I'm, I'm not sure if you heard but it's definitely uh closed right now and i don't think that even for the olympics next month that they're opening it up to foreigners to go there so they have their um you know they're in the middle of their COVID crisis so who knows i'm not sure if we'll be able to travel that way for you know months and months whereas here in the united states it's kind of light at the end of the tunnel um as far as you know the logan paul situation you know listen you know we talked to uh logan a couple of years ago he wanted a box i wanted to, i asked him if he's interested in an mma and he said, not right now, you know, we, we're continuing conversations, but um, you know, whether he chooses to box or on uh, Showtime Sports uh, pay-per-view or he fights and he, he decides to come fight mixed martial arts, you know, uh, we'll definitely have a conversation at some point. And um, you know, that show was very successful uh, in, in a lot of different ways and Showtime did a million buys, him and Mayweather. And, and honestly, I thought that he did a great job against Mayweather who clearly, in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round was trying to knock him out. So, you know, hats off to the kid, man. He trained hard. He did what he had to do. And he, uh, you know, and he, and he lasted eight rounds with, you know, arguably one of the best fighters of all time. Mike? Oh, hey, hey, how are we doing? Yeah. One more question for me, Scott. I, I know there's a lot of talk about the Paul brothers, but there was another boxer that came over to MMA and made her debut last night over the PFL Clarissa Shields. And I know that every organization kind of had discussions with her and wanted to bring her in. I'm just curious if you got a chance to watch her fight and what you thought of it and, you know, her going over to a different organization and, and, and what you thought of the whole thing. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, congratulations to her. I mean, you know, she's an Olympic medalist and she's had a great world championship career in boxing. Um, I just will say this. I think that the road just gets much tougher moving forward. And, you know, somebody that really has a good wrestling background and good submission game is going to be very dangerous against uh, a pure striker because it's going to take her years to really learn the submission game and the wrestling to fight somebody that has a wrestling you know, pedigree that, uh, you know, you know, that, uh, that's out there. It's like, it's gonna be very tough. So to me, she'll always have a shot because she has such great striking hands. But as far as, you know, um, moving forward, I think as the opponents get tougher, I think she's going to have her hands full. Last one, Darren. Thanks for having me. Congrats on yet another successful event, Scott. The quick question that I've got is do you have an accomplishment now that we're halfway through 2021 that you're most proud of for Bellator? Boy, I tell you, it, that's a that's a tough question. I mean, we've been working really hard here. I think that, you know, just I, I'd like to really, you know, look at it as a whole, as a company whole. And, you know, for us to to still be here doing what we're doing, doing what we love, having having our staff grind it out, having the fighters be very patient with us because of all the different, you know, hurdles we've had to face uh, in this COVID time. You know, I just got to give my hats off to them. And, and uh, you know, I am really look forward to the end of this year because, you know, it's going to get back to business as usual. And, and we're going to start traveling here pretty soon. And I think that the last fight, uh, kind of let's call it our residency, will be the July 16th fight. Um, that will probably be our last fight here. And then we might come back before the end of the year. but. Um, from then we're going to get on the road and I believe that we'll start doing fights in the San Francisco Bay area and San Jose. We'll do fights in uh, the New York area. We'll probably do fights in Chicago, LA. I mean, I think we're going to go back on the road and start hitting it hard again. All right. Thanks for the time, Scott. Thank you.